Ah, winter. The perfect time of year to huddle in under a blanket and make things. Specifically, a new wool skirt with which to brave the cold. This time, I want to experiment with keeping it both as simple as absolutely possible, inspired by 18th century skirt construction, but also adjustable without having to remove and reattach the waistband. With buttons. Because I like buttons. The fabric I will be using is this primarily brown and blue wool from my stash. It is slightly felted and quite fluffy, so should insulate against the cold pretty well, despite the light weight. I've noticed that the walking skirt I made earlier on this channel is suited primarily for, well, walking. Despite efforts to the contrary, it keeps getting in the way, and I find myself wishing for more of a working skirt. Luckily, I have a linen petticoat of just the length I want, and can use that for reference. To start with, I am cutting two lengths of fabric at the length of my petticoat, plus two inches of seam allowance. Since this is a tartan pattern and both my edges are straight, I figured I would try my hand at some very beginner level pattern matching by tying knots out of scrap thread at key points where the side seams will be. I'll leave about 20 centimeters or 8 inches at the top on either side for aforementioned adjustability. The side seams are quickly addressed on the sewing machine, with the seam running about 1mm to the left of my knots so that they'll be easy to remove after. A quick press and we can inspect our work. Yes, this is probably the easiest pattern matching one can do while still calling it pattern matching, but we have to begin somewhere, right? Since I left both side seams open at the top, I now have two sections through which to run my gathering thread. For the back panel, I am leaving about 10 centimeters or 4 inches on either side unpleated to reduce bulk. I want this area to overlap with the front when I try it on. The seam allowance of the front panel will be turned in, as you would expect, but the seam allowance in the back panel can be ironed forwards and function as a placket. The extra wide seam allowance from the pattern matching is helping us here, and will have no fraying since the selvage can be used in its entirety. Before addressing the waistband shenanigans, I'll fold the hem in once and bind it with linen tape. I adore this look and might have chosen it regardless, but in the case of this very fluffy wool, it does also help reduce bulk since I do not have to fold it twice. 10 out of 10 recommend binding skirt hems with twill tape. And as long as we are careful with our topmost stitches, we can have virtually no visible stitches on the right side of the skirt. Enough hem procrastination, let's get on with the waistband. The waistband for the back panel can simply be stitched on, as you would expect. Next time, I really should do that thing where you fold the fabric down before gathering to reduce bulk in the waistband, because this one got real chunky. Enough that I tried to top stitch a bit on machine to reduce it. This had mixed success. Freya was strong enough, but it was difficult to steer with all that wool, resulting in a less than pretty outcome. Not ideal. Still, a waistband was attached. Before we can attach the waistband to the front panel, however, we must quickly make up some pockets. Yes, this is 18th century inspired, and yes, I have already made myself a pair of deliciously roomy 18th century pockets right here on this channel, but this skirt shall have pockets all the same. 
After all, I am already frightfully anachronistic with my masculine use of buttons, so why not go all in? These pockets are made out of a tightly woven black cotton sateen that I prefer for just such purposes, and they are quickly cut and stitched up. I opted for a French seam on this one because they are so deliciously quick to do, and that bit of tucked in seam allowance on the outside is great for attaching our pockets to our front panel. which is done by sewing the top part of the pocket to the top of the waistband and only one side of the opening to the folded up side seam. Pockets in place, we can now attach the waistband to the front panel as well, followed by one buttonhole on either side. For the rest of the closures, a piece of linen tape that is long enough to tie above my waist is cut and pinned to the waistband of the back panel. Yes, the buttons could do the job on their own, but this helps keep those mock plackets slash seam allowances facing forward and keeps the skirt from falling down while I am buttoning up. A quick fit to check for button placement, and then the only thing left to do is to sew on said buttons. Yes, you do technically only need one button, but the whole point of this project was permanent adjustability, so I'm going to attach three on either side. And our new working skirt is complete. It really doesn't get much simpler than this. And I still have ample storage solutions for snacks, tools and secrets. That's it for this time, an easy project to kick off 2022 with. And if I wear this for a month and it turns out I do not like the bulk at the waist because if this fabric is so fluffy, it is just two rectangles and a waistband, it'll be no problem to recover the fabric and make a different type of skirt. Or something else entirely. <laughs> <laughs>